Hello everyone. Today we're going to discuss is inflation good or bad for the economy? That is, is inflation necessary for economic growth or is inflation a market failure? So in this presentation, our main points are going to be is inflation good or bad for the economy? That is, is inflation necessary for economic growth? Or is inflation a market failure indication? For some basic facts and, and understanding on inflation, kindly check the link in the description of this presentation. Now, just to quickly summarize, inflation is actually an increase in the money supply vis-a-vis -vis the increase in goods, services and financial assets in the economy. So if the increase in money supply is much more than the increase in goods, services and assets in the economy, it indicates inflation. And hence price rise or price increase is just a subset of inflation, not the entire inflation definition per se. Now, in reality, to be fair, inflation is only a symptom, like fever is a symptom of something wrong in the body. There is some disease in the body and fever is a symptom of that mostly. Similarly, inflation is also a symptom. Before we start, we'll have a brief con context of the modern monetary setup where we'll discuss how money is created and, and grow in the economy. Under the system, let's see how money is created in the economy. A person goes to the bank to get some loan. Now the bank takes from the person a collateral, which can be an asset, I mean inventory, and in lieu of that, the bank grants him a loan. And voila! money is created in the economy because as the name suggests in this system credit is money so remember in this system money is created by the banks out of thin air deposits are just needed to balance the books of the banks and all, remember this deposits are not needed to create money they are not in fact deposits are an outcome of the money created by banks or of thin air. For more details, check out the money presentation. Again, the link would be in the description. Now let's see how the money grows in the system. So the person who has taken the loan from the bank invests is in, biz in his business and his business luckily grows. Now the person sees future demand and he approaches the bank for more loan. The bank, since the business already has grown and the person has a bigger collateral to offer, the banks give him a bigger loan and voila, more money is created in the economy. But now comes the problem in the form of inflation. How? Let's see. Now, the person has taken loan from the bank. He This time he also invests in business. However, this time, because of some external circumstances or due to his own wrong decisions, the business turns out bad, a malinvestment. Or the person wrongly speculates in the real estate market. He invests money in the real estate. Or worse, he just spends it on himself. In all three scenarios, the goods created, goods or services are not created as they should have been in the economy. However, we do have credit or money supply that has already been created in the economy. So, the economy has more money supply than goods and services and due to this mismatch, inflation happens. Let's look at the second scenario. This time again, the person either invests his money in the business, which unfortunately doesn't grow, he invests the money in real estate, which look good for him, rises in price. This asset price rise 
in both circumstances he approaches the bank for more loan the bank grants them a bigger loan in both cases this at least in the former case is known as what we call evergreening of loan what happens is with this bigger loan the person gives back pays back to the bank the old loan and the remaining money he uses either let's say for putting up his old business on road investing again more in the real estate market or in the third scenario that, that we just saw investing or put spending the money on himself in all cases again the required goods and services are not produced but more credit is created in the economy leading again to more inflation now some points to note here is that while some malinvestments in the economy are a natural byproduct of risk taking because if you take risks you are bound to make some mistakes resulting in some malinvestments in the economy it's really the wrong practice of evergreening of loans that really blow up these malinvestments and this is where at this very stage is where the laws should be applied strictly by the central banks and the government to stop this practice because otherwise throwing of more credit on these malinvestments or unproductive investments like real estate speculation is where these malinvestments blow up as indicated by the increasing inflation numbers and create a systematic risk in the economy which would then ultimately force the government's hand to use the taxpayers money and rescue these entities now what happens to credit that was generated by the bank and was causing inflation now so let's say the business of the person has failed and even now the ever greening of loans that was happening for him has stopped the asset market that was growing has collapsed he has no he has no money no longer to invest further and in third case anyways he has wasted money he spent on himself now the bank is asking for their his their loan back but he has no money to return then what happens so here's what happens when he has no money to return the banks would take over the factory or for that matter any asset of that person into their custody and sell it over to a third party so in effect wealth is being transferred from person a to person b during this transfer there will be some credit destroyed in the economy as the market value or the value at which the bank sell over the asset to the third party will not exactly be the market value and so hence some deflationary pressures would be put on the economy with leading to some slowdown let's see the second scenario in this case even the collateral value is insufficient for the banks to recover the loans then what happens enter the investors they will start losing money how well because here the bank has to issue more equity or in some cases debt also to raise the money to cover its losses in the balance sheet that means more credit destruction takes place and this can lead to a bigger economic slowdown and now the third scenario in this scenario even the equity value of the bank is not sufficient to cover its losses in this case the federal government has to step in they have to buy equity into the banks and how would they do that well they would use the taxpayers money to do that they would use the tax taxpayers money to buy equity into the banks hence as they are shifting wealth from the taxpayers and buying equity into the bank this will lead to a lower demand in the economy and hence a lower slowdown also since they are using equity since they are using taxpayers money to buy equity into the bank it's very important that punitive actions are taken against people 
who are responsible for this mess. Otherwise, this phenomenon will repeat itself. And why the intervention of federal government is required? Because otherwise, we are in for a fourth scenario, which is a bigger mess. And that is, in this case, the depositors, or in other words, the common people, would lose money. This would mean the banks have to write off large amounts of loans from their balance sheets, causing enormous deflationary pressures on the economy and an eventual economic crash. So let me add some more points. As we saw, the taxpayers' money had to be finally used as the malinvestments grew bigger. So inflation is really the barometer that indicates the extent of these malinvestments. And so the key is to let these malinvestments correct automatically, as we saw in the previous slides, at an early stage, thus allowing inflation to return at the lower levels. Because by not enforcing the law correctly and strictly, and allowing these malinvestments to grow is when the government has to, has to intervene to prevent the systematic risks in the economy. This, in turn, socializes the losses, whereas privatizes the profits of the corporate entities. And this further increases the wealth gap between the poor and the middle class and the rich people who are the asset owners, which again run antithesis to the concept of the phenomenon of creative destruction, the very foundation on which the free market economy is based. Also, if at all the government has to intervene using taxpayers' money, it's imperative that it takes punitive actions in such cases so that it sets an example for future corporate entities and people to resist from such actions. So in conclusion, to s inflation per se directly is not good or bad for the economy because it's a barometer, an indicator. So for convenience we can say that. Inflation, if it's large, widespread and for a long term is a symptom of large malinvestments in the economy, which if unchecked would ultimately force the government's hand to intervene and use the taxpayers' money to socialize the losses, which would create or rather increase the gap between the rich and poor, resulting in a wealth transfer from rich, poor and middle class to the rich or asset owners. This also would ultimately cause large amount of credit destruction, putting in deflationary pressures in the economy and leading to economic slowdown of varying degrees. So if the malinvestments are really big, it can lead to almost an economic crash as well. Though inflation, if it's small in degree amount, if it's limited to certain sectors and of shorter duration, actually can act as a signaling mechanism, wherein it would, let's say inflation is high in one sector of the economy. This indicates to workers working in other sectors of the, sectors of the economy of the potential reward that sector A is offering them. So they would train to work in sector A. thus closing the gap between supply and demand and bringing the wages to a even level. So in other words, inflation is acting as a signaling mechanism in this case, which is very useful. Also, small inflation is, is like a reward to the risk takers because the risk takers, like let's say opening who wants to open their new business want some extra return vis-a-vis -vis other people and inflation is that extra return for them. That's their reward and this again infuses the economy 
with new business, new ideas, and hence increase the growth opportunities. So thank you very much for watching the presentation. Do subscribe if you like such content and comment in case of any queries. Thanks a lot.